okay guys so uh, before you watch this uh, i just want you to know that you should watch the overall um video that i i created from this okay uh, game so you should get the general idea how it works so i just recommend it so you watch it i will post the link in the description and also the sprites and the other things they will be also in the description that you can download download and just follow along so that will be it for the introduction so thank you and goodbye hello guys in this new tutorial series i will teach you how to recreate this game called OK on the mobile and a few people requested it so that's why I'm doing it and few few things I, I want to say before uh, the series so I will be splitting this into four parts or five I don't know yet uh, the end result will look something like this so basically you will have a ball which you can choose the point you want to shoot from and uh, you have this line that shows the direction where you want to shoot and you can see that is uh, very smooth and when you release the mouse it will basically just shoot into the direction and I can extend that so it can bounce off the walls if you want so just let me know in the comments and yeah we'll do it today so also I have a mecha mechanical keyboard so it will be a bit loud because I will be doing this live I can make some mistakes but I'll try to cut them out, uh, cut them out but if there will be some good mistakes I will leave them and explain uh, how to fix them okay so that will be it for for the introduction and uh, we can start making the game Okay guys, so first thing we have to do is open Unity, it doesn't matter what Unity, so I chose the 2019.1 and now when I have it open, let's click on the new, we'll create a new file, new project, I'll call it OK Tutorial and template will be 2D. So let's click on create project. I will skip this part. Okay guys, so this should be the default thing that you get when you open the new project. I have, uh, maybe I have a different setup of the viewports, but you should have something more or less similar. So first thing I do is I create a few folders. So I have a folder for scripts. I have a folder for prefabs, for sprites, and um, I have a folder for materials. And for now, we will have uh, yeah only four of these, and we will add more later. So first thing, I will go into sprites. And I'll import a few sprites that I created using Photoshop. And basically, this is just a basic circle, a smaller circle, and a square, which we will make our ball bounce off. So now, each of the sprites has a size of uh, 512 by 512, as you can see here. So I'll pick three of them, all of them. And I will change the pixel per unit to 512. So what it does, and click apply, is basically now when I drag this ball outside onto the scene view, you can see that it fits, fits exactly into one by one square in Unity. Okay, so after you drag it out, we can call it player because this will be our player. And you can leave it for now so in this part we will we will basically create the movement so we will get the input and we'll shoot our ball towards the direction that we specify so let's maybe set a few things first so I, I don't want this background to be blue 
So you click on the main camera and you can change the background color to something more white, not pure white, something more gray, but uh, something that is not pure white because it will it will be very hard to for your eye, eye to see something that it's very bright. So make sure to have clear flag, clear flags to the solid color because uh, only that way you can change the color of the background. So now we want to change the color of the our player to black or something more gray like this, dark gray. And we will now zoom out our camera till the ball will be as smaller. So I will change the orthographic size to 20 and it looks correct. So 20 is my desired size and you may ask why I'm not decreasing the player scale and I don't do it because I like to have it one by one by one all the time. Okay, so first I will have a different approach from the others because we will use uh, scriptable objects and scriptable objects are very cool things. It's basically an asset that you can store the data in and do a lot of other things, but we'll only store the data. So in scripts, we'll create a C sharp script called input data. And now let's double click on it to open it. So, okay, th this should be the file, default file that you get. So basically scriptable objects is, uh, it's not a mono behavior or like basically it is, but uh, just don't, don't listen to me now. You just don't attach it to the game object. So we will de derive, derive from scriptable, scriptable objects. So you can delete mono behavior and write scriptable objects. And we will not use uh, system.collection and system.collection generic libraries. So you can delete them. You cannot delete using Unity Engine because scriptable objects are uh, are within inside Unity Engine. And we will not use this callback methods because they are provided by Mono Behaviors. We'll have basically three variables. So we'll have public bool is pressed. And now I'll duplicate it down. So I have a sh shortcut called uh, Alt Shift uh, down arrow. And basically it will copy the above line to the bottom. Uh, and if you don't have it, just select the line, click Ctrl C and then Ctrl V under. So the second one I'll call is held. And the third one I'll call is released. Okay, so basically this script will be responsible for storing our data and we will have three balls and each will define if we are pressing now the mouse button or if we are holding the mouse button and if we just release the mouse button. So this will be our first script done. So now let's come back to our project and we will go to the assets and we will create a new folder called data and here we'll, we will store our data so now we want to create this data and we cannot create it it's not appearing here because we for i forgot about one thing so let's go back to the input data and now above the declaration of the class you have to write create asset menu and give it a file name so i will call it basically input underscore data and now if you save the file thanks to this uh, i forgot property uh, above the class now you can create this asset directly into the project folder. So now let's right click 
and if you hover about create you should have this thing uh, on the top so it should call it input data and you should have it here so i call it input data and as you can see it has three variables and it stores what i said so if our mouse is pressed how held or released so now we want to create a new script that basically will write the information to our data so let's create new scripts called input manager and let's open it by double, double click it by double clicking it okay so in here we will basically just need an update function and we will not use those two li libraries and let's delete start and now let's define the variables that we need so basically we need we just need one variable and it will be public input data and let's call it input data with the small i so basically this variable we will provide this variable from the project so we will drag it in and our input manager will write to that data so now we have just we just have to write a function i will write a new function because i like to keep everything separated so let's call it void and let's call it write data write input data so it will return nothing and inside here we want to get into input data express boolean and we want to assign our mouse button so input that get mouse button down and zero means the left click mouse button so basically now this will be true when we press our mouse button down and it will be false where when we are not pressing it so now let's copy it and let's just uh, paste it down not like this three times two times and in the second one we want to be is health we will access access is health and we will use the input that get get mouse button down so basically when we are holding it this will be true and the last one is is release so let's call it is release and as you guess it it will be get mouse button up so this will be true when we release our mouse button so the last thing we have to do is just call it within the update function. So let's call it write input data inside update function. So each frame, now we will write the data inside this input data uh, script. So let's go back to the project. Let's create a new empty and let's zero zero out the position let's call it input manager and let's add the input manager script to it and so as you can see it has a field called input data so now we have to drag the data that we created so let's go to the assets and let's drag in input data so now as you guess if i uh, untoggle maximize on play if i press play and let's click on the input data so it will show in the inspector you can see that it not it, it is not updating <laughs> but basically you have to trust me uh, if i click that mouse button this it is on but it's not refreshing Okay, so I will end it here because uh, the video was too long, so I was recording for 30 minutes and I decided to split it into two halves. So this basically, uh, this video is basically about the input data that we get from our user and in the next one we will actually make it uh, to move, so we will make our player move. So thank you and goodbye.